This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the X-Zone Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. And welcome back to the x everyone. My name is Rob McConnell. We're coming to you from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Ontario Canada. On the Talkstar Radio Network and the Exxon Broadcast Network, toll-free 1-800-610-7035. That is toll-free worldwide at 1-800-610-7035. My email address, exxon at exxonradiotv.com. On MSN Messenger, exxonradiotv at hotmail.com. And our website, www.exxonradiotv.com. My guest this hour is an old friend of the Exxon. Her name is Serona Knight. And uh, Serona has appeared on national television programs such as NBC's The Other Half with uh, host Dick Clark, Danny Bonaducci, Mario Lopez, and uh, Jan Adams, and The uh, Richard Bay Show. Serona lectured at the Learning Exchange and Whole Living Expo and, and gave workshops in Northern California. And, of course, she's a regular on national radio programs as well as internet blogs. And joining me now from California is the one and only Serona Knight. And welcome back, Serona. Well, thank you for having me back, Rob. It's always great to... It's a wonderful day here in California, bright and sunny. Oh, yeah. What's your temperature? Oh, about 70. Great. It's raining like hell here in Hamilton, and it's 36. Thank you very much. Nice talking to you. Speak to you in another couple of years. (laughs) I thought I'd share that little piece (laughs) of spring with you. (laughs) Tell me, what have you been up to since you and I last talked? And it must be about a year or two now. It has been a while. Um, just, you know, being being a person, living life, being a mom, being a wife, being a, a worker, bee, all those kinds of things, a practitioner. Still writing? Um, all, doing all the things most people do, just trying to get by. You know? Now, maybe we should start off this hour by me asking you this question. What is Wicca? Well... Wicca is a nature-based tradition. It's a spirituality. Mm-hmm. It's a um, spirituality that's based on the seasons. Um, for example, spring, summer, fall, winter, all four seasons. And it's also based on the elements. So it's considered a living tradition. In other words, we don't worship people that are, you know, dead. We work with the seasons mm-hmm. and we um, work with the energies that are inherent in the earth. And in that, we style our lives and our lifestyles accordingly. Tell me so. So it's it's a um it's basically the religion of the wise ones. Wicca means wise one. It's um, witchcraft. Now, is there a difference between Wicca and witchcraft? No. Wicca is just a um, new name for witchcraft. Um, it's a much more acceptable name. People are starting to realize that witches have nothing to do with Satan. I mean, of course, there are groups of people that are into the whole Satanism and mm-hmm. vampires and, you know, whatever their bag is, but they're not necessarily Wiccans, and they don't necessarily follow the Wiccan read, which is do as you will, but harm none. Yeah. You and I will have so to So it's take... just like any other religion, Rob. You know, you got the good people, yeah, you got of course. the nasty people. Of course, but, but tell me, uh, are, are there politics involved in Wicca as well? 
Of course. Really? Um, the really interesting thing right now is it is becoming more widespread mm -hmm. and more people are um, following this tradition. And what's happening now are the um, states of the Union, the United States, mm -hmm. are starting to acknowledge us and put the Wiccan um, holidays on their calendars. Uh, New, New Jersey was, I believe, one of the first ones to do that. Serrano, you and I have to take a commercial break. We'll be right back. Exonation Nation, Serrano Knight is my special guest this hour. www.dcsi.net forward slash tilde blue sky forward slash. That's www.dcsi.net forward slash tilde blue sky forward slash. We'll be back on the other side of this two-minute commercial break as the Exxon continues with Serrano Knight and yours truly, Rob McConnell, right after this. This is Johanna Carroll, host of Dialogue with Divinity on the Exxon Broadcast Network. While walking along Kanapali Beach in Maui this past year, I kept discovering all these shells and coral in the shape of hearts. My Dialogue with Divinity was very simple. Do you want me to do a retreat to heal people's hearts in Maui next year? And of course, the answer was yes. As a master spiritual teacher, I am offering you a neat retreat called RISE, May 8th through the 12th, 2017, and the chance of a lifetime to rest at a five-star resort for five days and experience a spiritual renewal of your heart and soul. Kanapali is one of the top five beaches in the world. This stunning resort has undergone a $40 million renovation. I walked the entire property, checked out the room choices on your behalf, and I must say, it is stunning. Our conference room faces the ocean with sliding glass doors. Maui is known as Mother Maui because it is a soft, gentle, healing energy. In the embrace of Mother Maui, you will feel yourself rising from the limitations of an ordinary life to an extraordinary journey of peace, bliss, and harmony a greater sense of clarity. Our RISE retreat ignites renewal in the sacred elements of air, water, earth, fire, and wind. There's plenty of free time to enjoy all that Maui has to offer. A small deposit is required now to reserve your space as this retreat, it will sell out. For more details, please go to johannacarroll.com and register today. Aloha, and I'll see you in mystical Maui. Serona Knight is our guest this hour. www. Come on, Serona, give people your website. <laughs> All right, it's it www.dcsi.net forward slash tilde blue sky. That's www.dcsi.net forward slash tilde blue sky. And uh, we're talking about Wicca this hour. And um, how do the goddess and God play into the spring season, Serona? Well, it's, it's um, essential to the whole um, practice of Wicca, um, the male and female energies, mm -hmm. and springtime is representation of the male and female energies coming together as one, and it's a time when day and night are equal. So it's a time of balancing. It's a time of balancing the feminine and the masculine and of planting seeds and fertility and combining, you know, um, powers and energies to um, bridge obstacles, that type of thing. It's a time for communing with nature and communing with your, you know, your feminine side, your masculine side, and also, um, you know, working also with um, the energies of the God and the Goddess that are within each of us and outside of each of us. In Wicca, we feel that the God and Goddess is both within us and without us. And in other words, it goes both ways. It's as above, so below. We don't feel that spirit is necessarily a separate thing. We feel that it's something that is part of us, one with us. Now, what is the oneness, and, and how do the many different pantheons of goddesses and gods figure into that concept? Well, the whole concept of oneness is that everything is one, connected as one, whether it's inanimate or animate. 
That means absolutely everything in your world, in your environment, is part of who you are. Um, you're connected to it. Um, everything globally that's happening, actually, you are connected to it, whether you um, freely admit it or not. So we all share this connection, this energetic connection. Everything is energy. And we are connected as one in this energy on this planet. And the whole idea with the gods and goddesses, and it's interesting because you can work with your heritage here, like you can work with the Celtic gods and goddesses, or you can work with the Italian right. gods and goddesses, the Romani, or you can work with the Greek gods and goddesses, the Egyptian gods and goddesses, the Jewish gods and goddesses. I mean, you can go across the board here, okay? Sure. Um, that's the nice thing about Wicca is it's not just one, you know, one way only. It's many ways to oneness, many roads to oneness. So depending upon your preference, you work with these energies. These are ancient energies that um, help you with your magic, help you with your spell working, help you with your rituals. And you, you create an energetic rapport. And they help you um, achieve your magical goals, achieve your goals in life, basically. How is the concept of oneness similar to the ideas of oneness in the movie Avatar? Yeah. A lot of people just love that movie. I oh, know it was I'm one fantastic, of them. I yeah. adored that movie. And um, the whole thing of connecting together to save the planet, connecting together mm -hmm. to commune with their planet is very similar to the concept of oneness, if not identical. It's just that you don't need um, you don't need a tail <laughs> to connect into it. <laughs> But it's just kind of interesting. You, um, or, you know, some kind of channel on your body to connect into it. You use your mind, mind energy, and you do, you, basically it's very um, akin to the sense of the, the same state as prayer or um, any other kind of humbling religious experience when you work with those energies and when you work with oneness and you connect. So it's, it's considered merging. You merge with oneness very much like they merged together as one in the movie. So what that points to is a lot of people are coming to this conclusion in life. A lot of people are pointing to this concept. A lot of people are bringing this concept forward to the, to the front boards now and saying, look, you know, enough of the warring, enough of the fighting, enough of the strife. We are one. We need to start really looking at things in the future as one people, not as a bunch of warring, fighting, conflicting countries. So that's getting back to the oneness. Yes, it really is getting back to the oneness. Because once you realize that you are part of the, you know, the commonality, the one, mm -hmm. you realize that everything you do affects that commonality. Everything you do affects the whole. It's the whole Gaia concept, the whole idea of wholeness. And, yeah, you know, it's all one. It all works together. It's not independent. It's very dependent on its parts. It's very much a macrocosm. Now, how do, how do witches or Wiccans work the elements in magic? Mm -hmm. We do. That's one of the basics in magic that goes back you know, thousands of years is mm -hmm. working with earth, wind, fire, and water, and spirit. And they're considered the divine quintessence in magic. And a lot of times, you know, depending on your personality, you'll have, oh, more of an affinity with, let's say, water, or more of an affinity with fire, or more of an affinity with earth, you know, depending on, or air, depending on who you are. Um, so, through working with the elements and communing with the elements and mm -hmm. being out in nature more, um, people can basically harness those energies, gather those energies for their own purposes, so that they can um, um, be healthier, so that they can have um, a better work situation, a better living situation, a better romantic situation, whatever it is that your goal is, that you want in life, whatever it is you desire in life. So the elements come into play because they're extremely powerful, they're ancient, they're um, readily available at your fingertips every time you, you know, you breathe. Right. You know, as you're right there. That, that goes back to the oneness, too, and the air we breathe. You know, we all basically, essentially, breathe the same air eventually. It all goes, you know, what, it, what goes around comes around. Again, the elements remind us of our oneness and our connection. Why do you and think, they can be very powerful allies, very powerful allies. Why do you think, Serona, so many people in today's society are looking outside of the established religions for answers that they can't find? 
Well, you know, I think you nailed it right there, Rob. That's what people are looking for. They're looking for answers to their questions. We're all looking for answers to our questions. And what happens with a lot of the established religions, I know this happened for me, is yes, they have a lot of answers to a lot of these pressing questions, but they're often stressing the fact that it's only their way and only their answer. And something in me always sort of goes, "Uh uh-uh, wait a minute, there's something wrong with one way, one answer. Because generally in a situation, there are several ways to approach it, and there are many answers depending on, you know, what you want as an end result and who you are and where you're going, et cetera. So Wicca is nice because there are many ways, and we don't try to answer your questions I think in Wicca, what it is, it's more of a hands-on type of situation where you go out and answer your own questions. You work with spirit. You go and do ritual. You go and do magic. You see what that rapport, that merging is like, what that state of enlightenment is like, that magical state of mind, and see how it um, influences your life, either positive or negative, and you move from there. And I think a lot of people find that it really um, influences their life in a very positive way. And that's why people are... Um, interested in Wicca because you can be, you know, you can be as strange or as normal Mm -hmm. or anything in between, all the gray areas in between, and Wicca can still be a spirituality you can practice and it wouldn't conflict with who you are. We wouldn't say, oh, you can't be that way. That's just not part of Wicca. You can be any way you want. Again, as long as you are not, as long as your intention is a positive one and not a harmful one. You know, it's funny, in in Wicca, there are connections with fairies, and in other established religions, there are connections with angels. Which came first, the angels or the fairies? (laughs) Well, that's, you know, that's a hotly debated subject. Um, The fairies, if you look at the traditional um, definitions of Celtic fairies, Mm -hmm. they're not these sweet little flower fairies you see on greeting cards. They're full-blown, full-sized, usually oversized, overblown um, energies, spirits that take form usually within the landscape, within trees, mountains, rivers, lakes, that type of thing. Right. And oftentimes they communicate with you in very (laughs) obscure, um, odd moments. Um, You may have an experience in the forest or in a park or just out in your backyard, and you'll have an experience where it feels like someone touched you on the shoulder but Mm -hmm. no one's there, or something in your garden will suddenly start shining much more brightly than it did, like a shimmering light over something for a while, and suddenly it's not there. Um, Or you may see um, a, a certain kind of being stepping out from a tree, and then when you look again, that being's not there. The fairy world and perceiving the fairy world is very much a um, is sort of like one step beyond your awareness. That's what um, a lot of people that um, study the fairy tradition would say. That it's you know R.J. Stewart has pretty much coined that it's just one step away from your awareness. So the whole idea is to to commune with the fairies and to work with those energies, those um, those elemental spirits, is to be where they are and be in a, more in the state of mind they are as opposed to where you are and the state of mind or consciousness that you're in as a human being. It's a much more natural state of mind. Explanations. And it's amazing how many people have these experiences, Rob. I've, on Facebook, I, I love Facebook. It's, it's, a great, it's a great new addiction. And... <laughs> I know, but the people on Facebook, when you ask them if they've seen a fairy or had an experience with a fairy type being or elemental being, I get so many responses. I mean, I get hundreds of responses from people that say, yes, yes, I have. Serona, you and I have to take our break at the bottom of the hour for the news. Serona Knight's our special guest, Exo Nation, www.dcsi.net forward slash tilde blue sky forward slash. That's www.dcsi.net forward slash tilde blue sky forward slash. And uh, Serona Knight and I will be back on the other side of this commercial break. 
As the Exxon continues from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, once again, our, our website, www.xzoneradiotv.com, and our worldwide tele... Uh, t- whoops, let's try this one again. Our worldwide toll-free number, 1-800-610-7035. We'll be back on the other side of the news. Don't- This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Welcome back, everyone. Serona Knight's our guest of this hour, www.dcsi.net forward slash tilde blue sky forward slash. And uh, before the uh, break, you and I were discussing the uh, the difference between angels and, and fairies. And, of course, everybody's got this concept that the fairy is the cute little thing, like a Tinkerbell. Yeah. Well, that's perpetuated by the culture. I mean, after all, for example, the Easter Bunny is a fairy. Yeah. The Tooth is? Fairy is a fairy, obviously. Yeah, with Tooth Fairy, So, I, I mean, we understand. have them in our culture, and they're perpetuated as fuzzy little sweet creatures. But I have to ask you this. Okay, I can understand the Tooth Fairy. I can understand the Sandman. But how do you, how do you classify the Easter Bunny as a... Fairy. It's a magic. It's a magical creature. Um, for example, one of the fairies types of fairies is like a brownie, which is basically <laughs> kind of like a small Ewok <laughs> that comes into the houses at night and cleans the house and does all the chores. There's a lot of traditions where um, they have animals that look very much like that. There are fairy traditions in folklore, mm-hmm. so it's not that out out there actually, Rob. It's it's all in the folklore and mythology of our. Of our wonderful people. All right, then let me let years. me ask you this question then: How does fairy contact differ from alien contact? Well, you know that's <laughs> that's something that I encounter once in a while because people oftentimes will say, "Well, um, I think it was a gray, an alien," or and you have to realize that fairies and aliens sometimes might have a very similar appearance mm-hmm. in the sense that our fairies <clears throat> that have that kind of appearance. Brian Froud, who is an extremely um, famous artist, um, depicts fairies. He draws them. He has these experiences every day, and he goes out, and he paints them and draws them every day. And he's depicted several fairies that if you were um, a UFO investigator, you would look at his books and go, hmm, gee, that looks an awful lot like a gray. And it's not. It's a fairy creature. It's an earthbound creature. There are you know, very pleasant fairy creatures that will help you, and then there's a very nasty, evil fairy creatures that will harm you. But is, and, isn't, it, isn't it possible that this artist is putting his own rendition into pop, uh, popular culture? Of course, but he has been working with these beings for quite a long time. He saw these beings, which is what promoted him to be an artist in the first place when he was a young man, mm-hmm. and he's been doing this for, gosh, over 40 years. He's He and his wife, um, were responsible for a lot of the um, types of special effects they used in Star Wars, for example, the Yoda puppet and mm-hmm. things like that. Which, and if you look at Yoda and you look at a gray, uh, they look very similar, don't they? Uh, yeah. There are there are similarities, and so I just just says that confusion. The way I explain it to people is that the spirit feels earthbound. Mm-hmm. In other words, if it has to do with earth, air, fire, water, somehow attached to this earthbound space chances are it's a fairy-type creature. If it has 
a space-bound presence or the presence doesn't feel earthbound or alien to earth in some ways and you usually do get a sense of that because you are an organic earthbound creature yourself yes then then that presence may not be a fairy creature it may be something else and who knows what it could be rob i mean <laughs> we don't really know what we're pulling into our sphere anymore do we no, no, we don't. And, uh, no, we don't. And things go bump in the night most every night. And people that want to go into denial about that, that's just going into denial. It doesn't help the situation. And it's getting stranger and stranger all the time. Why isn't, uh, how come, it, 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 you know, like after all these years, instead of getting stranger, should be getting more clearer? You would think so. Yeah. You would think that there would be more clarity for people. But you have to realize, you know, it's, sensationalism and wowism and <laughs> lying have become very, very popular in this culture. So it's kind of hard to cut through the crap. You know, that's one of the unfortunate things in the UFO field is that they're getting a lot of fraudulent UFO sightings now, which is just a pain in the you-know-what. It, it really slows down people that are trying to do true research in the field. And just like the UFO research and just like, um, you know, rocket science research people there are people like brian froud that are doing research in the fairy world and trying to come to some kind of um idea of how these people originated whether they were real whether they're part of a merging experience a channeling experience people have are they beings that are triggered somehow out in nature by certain kinds of weather events certain kinds of emotions what is this and what are people experiencing but unfortunately it's not getting clearing it's just it's getting muddier because of a lot of the just deception that's out there, unfortunately. Tell me, what is your opinion on the UFO phenomenon? Um, I think it's been muddied quite a bit in the last um, few months because of some of the things like Facebook, people wanting to be a big deal, and so they you know, post something that's not real on there, and so then everybody has to say, that's not real, and everybody gets all excited about it. And, you know, I think that's too bad. I think that um, we've definitely been visited, um, probably are still being visited. Um, I think that intervention has obviously been something that has happened in the past. If you just look at the technologies that have come into play, a lot of times there's no reason for those technologies to come into play unless someone kind of handed it to you. Kind of like in Star Trek where they hand him, you know, discoveries before they've been discovered. But don't you think it's and, possible that, that we actually have the ability as well as the, the, uh, well, I think the, we, the knowledge we, to, de to we develop these things? we have the ability, Rob, because we're the ones doing it. Yeah. We're the ones, you know, manning spaceships out to planets now and doing things that we weren't doing before. So obviously we'd have the abilities. I, think, I just think that we've had some help. I don't know if it's been so much in a lot of direct contact, but certainly that information has seeped through somehow. And it's been my experience in talking to people that direct contact is a reality. And it's just something that probably in 20, 30 years will be something that's talked about a lot more and people won't be so afraid to, you know, say well, what their experience is. Well, what's the difference between alien contact and contact with angels? Okay, now angels, angels are an interesting thing. Angels, you know, they were supposedly, uh, you know, the angels, the fairies, were considered the fallen angels, the ones that um, went below the earth. Like they're considered the stars within the earth, as above, so below. Mm -hmm. In other words, the fairy beings, the clans, and the ancestors, basically, because fairies are our ancestors. They're all the people that have been before. They're the dead spirits. And basically, these clan members and ancestors, are they are like lights or stars in the land itself. And there, there are a lot of old legends and stories about that the light within the land beneath you mirrors the light above you in the stars. And there's an awful lot of Native American um, stories that also mimic that, or not so much mimic, because who knows, they might have come before, but also follow that idea that the stars are in the land, actually in the land, that you could see if you knew what you were looking at, just as they are above you. So as above, so below. You were mentioning... And the fairies, the angels and fairies, um, that's a, that's, like I said, that's a heated debate. Um, they're probably the same thing, just different degrees of spirits, different types of spirits, mm -hmm. different levels of spirits. Now, before the break, you were mentioning uh, the, the, uh, how you love using Facebook. 
I do. <laughs> it's a new addiction. I mean, how can you not love it? I mean, suddenly you can talk to everyone and um, yeah, well, put you your can... ideas out there and comment on people and join groups. And I, I don't know. know. I, I find it a pain in the butt. <laughs> you know, like, oh, At I, first, I, I was kind of, it was kind of like pulling teeth. I was yeah. like, and I'm on dial-up, so you know it was like pulling sure. teeth. But after I realized that if I just stopped trying to pull up the applications and some of the stuff that my dial-up won't do, it, it became kind of a nice experience. You know, I, 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 guess if I, guess, I guess if you've got nothing better to do with your time or you want to take a break away from your, your routine, that's, that's one thing. But I, I cannot understand how all these people are addicted to it. I, I, for, for well, what, I think it's more, it is, it, for example, it's become part of my routine. You know, I'll get up and have my cup of tea and turn that on for about a half hour and you know, put a blog on there, put an idea on there and see if people are interested or, you know, whatever it might be. And maybe you send a message or two and then in a half hour I'm off and doing other things. So for me, it's more of a way to contact okay. a lot of people I've known through the years that I wouldn't normally be able to contact. Mm -hmm. It's a real easy way to do that. You know, I can talk to, I can chat with people in England. I can chat with people in Italy. I can chat with people in Canada. I can chat with people in Mexico. But don't you think? Don't you a, think the, nice thing. Don't you think that we're losing the true art of communication, oral communication, by all these text messages, all these Facebooks, MySpaces, Twitters? We're we're losing the knack and the ability to communicate verbally. And the way I see it, as long as we keep on texting, we'll never develop to the next the next uh, true method of communication, which will, in my opinion, be telepathic. Well, that's probably true. Um, I think you're right. I think mind-to-mind -mind communication is something that will develop more strongly in the future. I think it's already developed to mm -hmm. a certain extent. Certainly the um, governments and scientists of many countries have been working on these experiments for, you know, about 50, 60 years now, you know, heavily working on them. You know, how to, how to control people's minds, how to influence, how to irritate, mm -hmm. how to, you know, bombard people with certain kinds of um, electromagnetic fields. But you see, people are, doing, people, are, people are doing it to themselves these days. They're, we're we're <laughs> bombarding course. ourselves with microwaves, <laughs> you know, and that's you, exactly... You talk, about, you talk about the Internet, you know, probably what's much more unhealthy is television. I mean, people will just leave it on all day. The worst, the, the what's more unhealthy than the internet or the television is, is your cell phone texting on your cell phone because a, a cell phone works on microwaves. Yeah, I'm not really understanding why people continue to have cell phones. I, I don't have one. I mm -hmm. don't want one. Um, I, I probably live a more um, um, pastoral life than most people, and my need for a cell phone is. I have no need for yeah. a cell phone. And the things are like little time bombs. Oh, that's what I think, too. Tell me about your newest book, which is entitled Natural Healing Wisdom and Know-How. Oh, that's, um, it's not my book, but I'm in there. But thank you for mentioning it, Rob. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, it's um, by Black Dog Books and Leventhal, and, um, which is Random House. And yep. it's all about practices and recipes and formulas for um, natural healing and health. And it's got things like, you know, what, what I did in there, my section is all about um, crystals, healing crystals and gemstones. And I go through, you know, some basics about crystals and basics about crystal techniques, healing techniques, especially self-healing techniques that you can do at home, you know, with a clear quartz crystal. And just it gives some layouts that you can do with um, crystals or different kinds of gemstones mm -hmm. and explains what the whole idea of crystal energy is and how you use it to as an accelerator or amplifier of your own energy. And there's all kinds of things. It's, it's an incredibly huge book, but it doesn't have a huge price, which is very, very nice. And it's got all kinds of stuff in it, like healing, the er herbology, homeopathic medicine, aromatherapy, yoga, acupressure, microbiotics, macrobiotics, juicing, self-hypnosis. I mean, it's, you know, it, it goes through basically all of the practices that, you know, are considered natural healing now. And what it's nice, the wonderful thing about natural healing is it actually does work. Um, I'm a testament to it. You know, I was told I could never get pregnant for the longest time by traditional doctors, and then I went to a, um, a Steiner um, Place where they used um, different kinds of homeopathic mm -hmm. um, remedies and started taking homeopathic remedies, which are talked about in this book here, this new book. 
and um, was able to have a child within a year. Wow. And that was after trying for 16 years. So this stuff works, and I'm testament to it. And it's, it's worked in my life when I've had um, health issues where I've gone to natural remedies, and they really have worked, and which is lot, amazing to me. And a lot more people are turning to doctors of natural medicine now than at any other time in history. Sure, because, you know, the pharmaceutical drugs, you know, you take those, you take enough of them, all they do is make you sicker. Yep. You know, they, they, they mess up your kidneys and your liver and your mind. And, you know, by the time you're done taking, you know, the pharmaceuticals, you've got to do something to try to get all those toxins out of your body. And that's where the natural healing comes in. And that's why a lot of elderly people, for example, are finding huge relief um, just by taking um, certain kinds of herbal remedies that um, elevate the oxygen in their system and to the brain, for example. Because herbs will do all kinds of different things to your body, depending on what you need in your body. And, you know, it, it's a real thing, and it's something that really people can try for themselves. And, you know, everyone's different, so yeah. certain things are going to work for certain people, and other things aren't going to work as well. And, of, and as you and I have discussed in the past, Wiccans or witches were the very first naturopaths. Well, certainly, you know, yeah. the, the stereotypical, you know, the Shakespeare, the three witches stirring their pot of magical brew, you know. <laughs> oh, that was all, that was all bad Yeah, marketing. exactly, yeah. exactly, exactly. Listen, you and I have um, to take our final break for this hour. Please stand by, Serona. Serona Knight's my special guest this hour, Exonation. www.dcsi.net forward slash tilde blue sky forward slash that's www.dcsi.net forward slash tilde blue sky forward slash i'll be back on the other side of this commercial break with serona knight as the exon continues from our studios in hamilton ontario canada don't call back right negative that's just in over 36 years in law enforcement, I've learned a few things. The most important is the proper gathering and preservation of evidence is vital to putting the bad guy behind bars. It's no different in the world of paranormal investigation. Whether it's the search for the afterlife, cryptozoology, extraterrestrials, and UFOs, how we gather that evidence of their existence, preserve that same evidence, and present it to a court of our peers will make the ultimate difference in proving the existence of worlds and entities that are beyond our imagination. Come with me on a journey that seeks to prove with undisputable evidence what man has struggled to believe for centuries. Join me, Larry Lawson, host of the Paranormal Stakeout, coming to the X-Zone Broadcast Network. Check out the broadcast schedule for Paranormal Stakeout with yours truly, Larry Lawson, at www.xzbn.net. For more information about me, my travels, and my team, check out our website at www.paranormalfbi.com or join us on Facebook at Florida Bureau of Paranormal. I am Dr. Carl O'Helvey, founder, president of a new cancer foundation focusing on evidence-based physical, mental, and spiritual interventions, including natural cancer cures, prayer, meditation, affirmations, nutrition, and other related holistic cancer prevention and cure modalities. These are used in cancer education, research, and financing care. I ask for your help to continue this important work by donating at www.holisticcancerfoundation.com. You're listening to the X-Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Serona Knight is our special guest, a good friend of the X-Zone. Her website is www.dcsi.net forward slash Tilde Blue Sky forward slash, that's www.dcsi.net forward slash, Tilde Blue Sky forward slash. Uh, Serona, what's your take as a member of the Wiccan community? And what do other Wiccans talk about when they're asked about the scenario of the end of the Mayan calendar, December 21st, 2012? Well, I think everyone, absolutely everyone that is, you know, sort of um, plugged in mm-hmm. 
to the paranormal community knows that there's going to be a shift. We all realize that. Um, what that shift may be, um, I think there's a consensus opinion that it'll be a shift in energy, a shift in consciousness. In other words, it'll move um, this planet to a higher harmonic, move this planet and its people to a place where you're going to have to deal with all your crap and you're going to have to move beyond it mm -hmm. and evolve. So I think it'll be a key shift for the evolution of humankind. Do you see it as a lot uh, as many people who use the internet to spread false information are saying it's going to be the end of the world, uh, the return no. of planet X? No, no I don't. Biru, I don't believe in those ideas of doom and gloom. <laughs> I don't buy into that. No, you know, people are fairly resilient, and the Earth, as an entity, Mother Earth, is fairly resilient too. And we live here; we're part of it. I I have every um, faith in people to restore the earth, to go green, mm -hmm. to start making better choices for themselves and their families and their children's future. I think that I feel strongly that people are essentially good. And Somewhere. I feel that essentially we will make those positive choices. It may take us a while. It may be like pulling teeth. Mm -hmm. But I think we will, just like we got this vote for health care. That's essentially a good choice. That's a good direction to go in. It's such a better direction to go in than what was going on before. You just have to give it time and have faith. I think you have to give a lot of things time, yeah. and you have to... It's so hard to do that, especially in this world today, because everything is immediate, instant gratification. You know, if it's just not right in front of you, and you can't get it right yeah. that minute, then you just don't want it. And people have to remember that's not the way life is. A lot of things that are really, really good in life, like love and good food and good politics and world peace, take a little time to cultivate, take a little time to create. But the end result is really, really worth it. Serona, the end result is incredible. Serona, we've run out of time for tonight. But I, I want to thank you so much for joining us here again. It's been so nice talking to you after all this time. I wish you it's nothing. been wonderful to talk with you, Rob. It's I, just amazing to hear I, your voice again. I love it. I wish you nothing but health, happiness, and, and the very best to you, your family. And to all the members of the Wiccan community that I know you're in touch with. Uh, so until next time when we meet here in the X Zone, merry meet, my friend. Merry meet and merry part. Thank you, Rob. You have a very happy spring. Thank you, sweetheart. Serona Knight, www.dcsi.net forward slash blue sky forward slash. That's www.dcsi.net forward slash tilde blue sky forward slash. We'll be back on the other side of the news at six and a half minutes past as the Exxon continues right here on the Talkstar Radio.